There you go. Does that look like a fighter's body? Clearly not. Do I give a fuck? No. Have a look. Fat man. That's who beat you. Shame on you, my friend. <laughs> Shame on me. I looked at myself and I thought, you're a failure. I don't take boxing seriously, as you can tell. I don't care about boxing. Sometimes, even delusional thinking. I used to sleep with the light on because I couldn't be in the dark alone. Oftentimes, they can't get the energy to even get up and take a bath or a shower. They have no motivation to do it. Zero motivation to have a shave, zero to brush your teeth, even have a shower, nothing. So just because people are exhausted and lethargic and they don't enjoy things doesn't necessarily mean that there's an absence of anxiety. I had an anxiety attack and I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought I was dying. This is really the place that many people find themselves and it's a pit that they just don't know how to climb out of. And it just went from bad to worse. Hi guys, as you already know, the revenge against Fury is cancelled due to whatever issue this time Fury has. You kind of went off the rails. Oh, and the only thing I could think of to make it better go away for a bit was getting drunk. My weight wasn't put on through being a normal person eating normally. My weight was put on through excessive drinking of lager. I put on 147 pounds. There's like 500 calories in one pint of beer. I read that you, was it 20 pints a day? Yeah. I've drunk 18, 19 pints. Followed by whiskey, oh. vodka, everything else. Then I'd stop off on the way home and have pizzas, kebabs, chocolates. I'd never took a drug in my life ever. You had never done drugs before the Klitschko fight? No, nothing. What were the drugs of choice once you won the title? Cocaine was the usual one. And that was it, really. Cocaine and alcohol. Alcohol and drugs. If you're, if you're suffering with mental health problems, yeah makes it go away for like five minutes yeah but when you wake up the next day it like crashes avalanche. down even more if you put your body through torture you can't expect to feel great the alcohol and the drugs exacerbate any sort of bad state that you have because you're going to feel like shit i was out all night partying with, with uh, women of the night and not coming home and sometimes didn't come home for three days i'd go to the shop and end up in new york from morecambe what was you like at home with your wife at that time terrible non-existent i'd go out for days on end drinking Paris, I'll see you later. So where are you going, Tyson? Get your bottle over and you say why. So why is it see you later? You must be going to the pub. No, no, welcome to my crib. She'd be ringing me, they'd, they'd be, I'd switch my phone off and they'd be thinking, right, he's killed himself now. He's gone. And they'd be phoning around everywhere. Every night, every day, I'll call you, you're mailing it, mailing it, mailing it, and you couldn't be on time. You would be stood like a doctor outside. Uh, looking for me, have you seen Tyson? I can't call him for two days, and he, I think he's killed himself. Because I was always like, yep, yeah, this is the day I'm going to kill myself. And He was in a bad way. And he was in a worse way than what we thought he was, because we didn't know what was going, what was going on. Some families, it's untalkable. My, my family being one of them. If you asked him, he never got any sympathy from us. We'd say, you're a fool. You're seeking attention. You're a clown. Everybody gave up on me. My full family thought I was definitely going to die and I was going to kill myself. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I just wanted my son back. I didn't care about fame, boxing. With his head all over the place, I thought, can I face that? Am I strong enough to face it? And I didn't think I was. So... <sighs> Excuse me. Sorry, I didn't want to upset you. How do you feel about that now, the fact that you didn't give him any sympathy at the time? I wouldn't give him no sympathy now. You know, it's just the way we are. I was a shadow of my former glory. So I am the Gypsy King, and I am the King of the Heavyweight Division. Ain't no contest, simply the best. I'm still unbeaten, I'm still young, I'm still good looking, I may be a bit chubby, but some chicks dig that, don't you? And I really believed that I was going to end up in a padded room, and it was a terrifying thought to the fact of I wasn't going to go there because I was going to kill myself before I ever made it there. And I remember a moment I was in a, I was in a high performance car, Ferrari, I was heading towards a bridge. And before I hit this bridge, I got to about maybe 500 foot from the bridge. I heard a voice say, no, don't do this, Tyson. Think about your kids. And I pulled over. I remember I was shaking, I was crying, I was thinking. Think about your family and your little boys and girls growing up with no father. And everyone saying your dad was a weak man. He wasn't a good father, he wasn't a good man, he was a useless, worthless piece of rubbish. He left you. He took the easy way out because he couldn't do anything about it. And I thought, that day, I'll never, ever, ever try or think about taking my own life ever again. And then you've got to seek medical advice to get well again. I went and got help from a, the leading psychiatrist and doctor in the UK. She said, he is not to be trusted alone. He's an imminent death risk. 
That's the highest level of suicide risk that she'd ever assisted. The sooner you see the doctors, the sooner you can get well again. Still, Tyson was fighting to climb his way out of depression. I saw some images of you sparring last week. Are you back in the gym now, ticking over? No. And are we going to see you back in the ring anytime soon? Um, well, let's just say Big Papa never reveals. Well, you never can tell, can you? But within the span of 24 hours, two events completely changed everything. I remember it vividly. It was 2017, Halloween night. I was a 400 pounds dressed up as a skeleton. And I go to this fancy dress party. I had one drink. I looked around me and I thought, what am I doing? I looked around me and I, all I could see was like young kids. These are all young kids compared to me. I'm 30 and I feel like I was the oldest guy in there, like 29. I was like, what am I doing here? Is this what you really want when you've got a family at home and you're depriving your kids and your wife of, of quality time? And I put the beer down like that and I got out of there and it was only about 7.30. I went back home and went upstairs. Took the skeleton suit off and I got down on my knees. And I was in a dark room on my own, praying and begging God to help me. I was begging, there was tears rolling down my face. My chest was wet with tears. When I got up after about half an hour, it felt like it was an eternity, but it was only a few minutes. I got up and I felt the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. And I called out to my wife, I said, Paris here. And I said to Paris, right, tomorrow, I'm gonna start the regain mission. I'm gonna become heavyweight champion of the world again. She said, yeah, yeah, I've heard it all before. Cause I'm the man who cried wolf a thousand times. And for the first time in years, I knew I was going to make a comeback. I said, I promise you. I said, I'm going to do it. And that was regain being the best heavyweight on the planet again. Next morning I got up, got my sweatsuit on. I went out for a run in my sweatsuit. I had, I had ambitions of running two miles. I got about five minutes into the run and stopped. First morning run, a long time. Got my sweatsuit on ready to blow the weight. While I was walking, I was flicking through on my phone on Instagram, and I saw a little video from Deontay Wilder. Hey, Fury done too, if you ask me, I don't know. Tyson Fury let himself down, let his family down. He can never come back. Yeah, he talks like he's coming back, but I, I really don't think he's coming back, though. No. Shadow of his former glory, he's fat as anything, he'll never come back. He need help right now, man. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm gonna give it you proper. You're my motivation now. I'm coming back to get you. Well, the thing is, I've made my mind up. I am definitely, definitely going to return. Guess who's back? It's that time of the morning again, when we're out on the grind. Hey, it's that time of the day again, where the Gypsy King is heading back to the gym. And every day I go out on the canal and I do a little run in my sweatsuit. Sweating. But still, anywhere's a start. Anywhere's got to be better than nowhere. And every day I get a little bit further until I was doing four or five mile again. Right, we've just finished training. Brutal session. I need to train on a daily basis. If I don't train for two days, I feel totally depressed. Just want to say I'm coming back better than I ever was before. When you go home, I want you to think about me every night. I give myself short-term goals and long-term goals. A man needs goals, no matter what he's doing. Even if he don't need the money or whatever, whether he's helping somebody, he needs a goal. I wasn't boxing for history, I wasn't boxing for a belt, I wasn't boxing to become wealthy or anything else. I was boxing for my happiness. But I'm back now with a vengeance. You've lost punch. seven stone. How have you done this? Just black coffee is the key. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you to lose all that weight? Around about six months. Mm. We worked very hard, trained three times a day, was on a strict diet. and uh, No sex. Plenty of sex. <laughs> <laughs> if you feel fit, you feel good. It's almost natural to feel depressed if your body is literally depressed. What can I say? I'm the greatest of all times. Had the one combat fight, had the other combat fight. I said to Frank, I don't need any more combat fights. Make the Wilder fight now. He said to me, I'm gonna fight Deontay Wilder. I said, you're crazy. Tyson, I'm here, baby. I can't wait to see you, big mama. Today, the formal announcement of the fight of the year. This could be one of the greatest comeback stories in British boxing history. Two undefeated heavyweight champions go at it like this. This is a huge fight. It's power, raw power versus boxing skill. Two guys, one six foot nine, one six foot seven, one British, one American. It doesn't get any bigger than this. This is the biggest fight that could be made.